Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey guys, uh, Doug Hughes here. Uh, great to see you guys again. Um, here to talk to you about my Snow White and the Seven Dwarves uh, cottage and uh, underlying uh, mining cave build here. Um, we go. It's a, it's very eye-catching with all the movement and even the lights you've incorporated under there and, and in the house itself. So kind of give us the background. What's the story behind the build here? Yeah, sure. Uh, and thanks for saying it caught your eye. Uh, so basically the idea was this was for my blogging with Brick Nerd and uh, they had the opportunity to get the set a little early before it was out for public. And uh, you know, Lego does that with a lot of sites like that, right? And uh, I talked to Dave, our head brick nerd guy, and was like, okay, what am I going to do? Like, I'm kind of a mocker. I'll do a mock, you know? It just makes sense, right? So uh, basically sketched up a few ideas, chatted for a little bit, and it just was, like, obvious. I should do a cave, do something that's got, like, mine carts and movements, and you could do some fun lighting and all that. And so that, that was how I was born, and I actually had to do it really fast because uh, they sent me the set. I had about a week to build the set. Then I went on vacation for a week, and then I had 10 days to build this thing, and I'm like... Go, 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 go. <laughs> so. no, that's so cool. Uh, we've been big fans of Brick Nerd and all the contributors over there for a very long time. And Dave and the whole team is really amazing. So I'm glad that was kind of the, the inspiration for this. But then as we dive into this here, obviously you've got the cave, which is kind of your your custom portion. But what else did you do up top here uh, in, a kind of a, in addition to the kit? Sure, yeah. So as, as I sketch it up, it was obvious that there was going to be sort of uh, – uh, enough ground to cover that the set itself couldn't quite cover everything. So uh, I knew I wanted, like, the set sort of has three pieces, right? It's got the main house with, like, the yellow roof and, and all that, and it kind of ends where Snow White is. And then there's the, uh, I guess, the glass coffin and the mine, or the, the well. And so I just had to build enough ground to cover the base and make these sort of artistically arranged, right? Uh, and I thought it was kind of neat to have each one on top of the pillar, so it, it worked pretty well. And then I was talking to my friend Keith, uh, and he had the great idea to do a little, like, farming patch. I was just going to build a bunch more trees, and I was kind of lamenting, oh, I don't want to build more trees. And he's like, why don't you just do a little farm thing? I'm like, ah, oh, genius. So uh, that's how the top part came together. Uh, great. So yeah. you've got the farm thing there, but you do have some nice trees. What are what are some of the designs you use here, or some of the main pieces you could decide to incorporate? Sure, yeah. I, I can't claim any credit on the trees. Actually, the designs are all Lego. Uh, I just made more of them. Okay. So basically, the Lego set had the beautiful birch tree, and uh, I don't even know what a couple of these would be called, but <laughs> then the pine trees. And I just built a bunch more pine trees because it was quick and easy. And it was just nice because it matched with the rest of the set, right? So, yeah. Gotcha. So you kind of you kind of had that down. Then what was your approach to the mines as you started to work underground here? Yeah, for that, uh, started off 100% with the uh, mechanism. It's like it's always kind of the toughest part of most builds. And, no, you know, getting a design is needed because you need to build around it. And so it was like, it kind of sets what you can and can't do later. And so uh, I tried a few different things and I, I realized I only had a, like, what I say, 10 days or so. So I had to pick something quick. And so the uh, using the roller coaster parts was a way to get like a quick circle. And then I just had to figure out how do I actually motorize it. And uh, I just have two motors that have a little gearing and they each push a tire and the tires run on one side and on the opposite side of the mine carts, there's just some uh, tires attached to the build that just kind of hold it in place and then just slowly push the whole thing in a circle. And once I had that, I was like, okay, I can move on and, and do the rock work. And that was just a lot of work and a little bit of planning, but nothing nothing really complicated there, just a lot of snot work, uh, uh, building up the, the sides of the, the pillar walls so I could uh, do the kind of the striated uh, the look like that. So. Yeah. Which looks fantastic, and, and you really get some really nice shaping there to get that rounded shape, and it's not uh, it's not a super easy thing to achieve always with Lego. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, certainly uh, over the years I've tried a lot of different rock work methods, and uh, this is the first time I've probably done this in, like, any significant quantity, and I was just really happy how it came out. And, yeah, like you say, it's a lot of work to, to get, like, one layer at a time, but uh, astute viewers might catch that uh, it's actually – almost entirely symmetrical because again for time I was like I don't have the time to just design two totally different sides so I literally built the one side the, the you know the first pillar kind of second thing that's like a pillar and then just mirrored it like as fast as I could I would take like a layer off build that on the layer off and build it backwards and I, I ran out of a couple parts that's why there's a couple little differences but <laughs> that's pretty much exactly the same 
So. No, that works well. And then what's kind of the inner core portion there? What are, what are they mining for in the middle there? Uh, diamonds. <laughs> I, I was listening to this song so many times, so clearly that's what's in my head, there, you know. Uh, yeah, so I, I just figured I'd throw in kind of a few little gemstones of various colors. In the movie, they're all, like, uh, brilliantly lit up, and uh, Dave wanted me to throw in a bunch of lights, and I just didn't have the time. Uh, but I think that would have looked really cool had I, like, lit up the, the gems as well. But it's also kind of neat to have, like, the one single lantern that just sort of uh, has some shadows and fun stuff, but... Yeah, I, just, I built in a few little gems here and there for them to, to work on. And and then the rest of the dwarves, I was not I was going to have them spread around the top until I realized that the uh, the mine cart and reindeer is only going to come by once in a while. I'm like, oh, I'll just have the rest of the dwarves marching in formation behind it. So that made it a little more visually interesting to you know, have another thing. So. And you did add some lights, though. Like you said, you got the lantern and then the, the ha lights in the house there. So what types of lights did you use? How did you incorporate that? Uh, yeah, uh, and I knew I wanted to do that up front, which makes a big difference, right? So uh, to plan the build around it. So I made it so I could get to stuff if I needed to. Um, and so I've been using uh, a company called Bricksmax, uh, I, I believe a Chinese company. Um, they had sent me lights uh, for a prior Brick Nerd article. And so I've just sort of been like, well, that works. I'll just keep doing their stuff. Uh, and so it's just a few very simplistic lights. Uh, I tried to do a flickering thing, but... The flicker module wasn't working the way I wanted it to. It just didn't make a convincing light, so I just said I'll, I'll just go a steady light. And so uh, they're each just a little point lights, uh, one for the lantern, and I think maybe three for the house so I could cover the whole, all the ground. And uh, uh, there's a little board behind. You just plug them in, and then that then goes to a USB plug that uh, I plugged into something I got on Amazon for it to power it. So. Perfect. It looks fantastic. Now, we've covered a number of your incredible builds over the years in the past. So for people watching, if you haven't checked out more of Doug's work on the channel, definitely go do that because it's been some incredible stuff. But I wanted to know, you know, is this the first time you've tried to tackle a project like this where you start with a Lego kit and can sort of incorporate the build around it? Yeah, you know, that's a good question because I think it might be. Uh uh, it was a really unique opportunity for me to get a set early, for one thing. That was just super cool. Uh, and I had to be all secretive about it. I, I couldn't tell anyone what set I had. Uh, and, and, yeah, it was just neat because uh, usually you have to invent something completely on your own or, or find some concept art or something. But this time it was like having the set as part of it kind of gave you some rules to, to run with, right? And so that was just kind of neat. You know, then you could be creative, but you had some uh, a little... A sprig of an idea to, to start with, right? And uh, so that, that was kind of fun. I, I would definitely do that again. Yeah. Uh, awesome. No, I think it turned out fantastic. Now, for people who do want to see more of your work, are you active online? Where can people find that online? Uh, yeah, uh, I've got an Instagram account, uh, a Flickr account. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you just search Douglas Hughes Lego Instagram, it should come up. Uh, yeah, so. No, thanks for the shout out there. Absolutely. We'll make sure to link to your Instagram in the description of the video so people can check that out. But yeah, keep up the great work both with your builds and with Brick Nerd. It's always fantastic to see everything they've got over there. Thanks for chatting with me. Oh, thanks so much. And uh, it's right back back at you guys. Uh, Beyond the Brick, Brick Nerd, love you guys. So yeah, cheers. <laughs>